The seventh generation Fiesta now offers electrified engine technology and whether you want it as a conventional super mini, a would-be crossover or a hot hatch, you'll find that the improved version of this Mark 7 model has grown up a bit. It still though hasn't lost the youthful, eager feel that endeared previous generation models to so many super mini buyers. This is how you write a bestseller. What's been the world's most significant car in the last half a century? Well, this is our nomination, Ford's Fiesta, rejuvenated in Mark 7 model guys for 2017, and then further updated three years on for a fresh generation of buyers. And that's created the car that we're gonna look at here. The figures speak for themselves. Since this Super Mini was launched back in 1976, over 17 million models have been sold, 4.5 million of those in the UK. Which is why, to keep up with demand, a Fiesta currently rolls off the Cologne production line every 68 seconds. The appeal of this car shows no signs of tailing off either. In this country, we bought more than a million examples of the previous Mark 6 model, and that was launched in 2008, and it's been our market's best-selling car for the last decade, a trend which has continued with the Mark 7 model, 78,000 of which were sold in the UK in 2019, more than a third of the 227,000 total sold in Europe. In short, you can forget Mondeo, man. We are today a nation of fiesta folk. It's an astonishing success story, particularly given that in the past, the only area in which Fiesta models have really excelled has been in driving dynamics. And that's usually one of the less important attributes for super mini buyers. You'd certainly expect that if Ford were gonna continue this sales dominance, at least in our market, greater efforts would be needed. Now, given that, it was somewhat surprising back in 2017 to be presented with a seventh generation model that looked so similar to its predecessor. The Blue Oval brand claimed it had altered virtually everything, changing every body panel, updating the interior and revamping the suspension. As a result of all of that, apparently out of around 2,500 parts needed to create a Fiesta, only around 200 were carried over into this seventh generation model at its original launch. Plus, there was also a much wider choice of derivatives than ever before, with hot hatches, a super luxury Vignale version, and even a Fiesta Active crossover model added into the mix. Despite all of that, what wasn't much different back in 2017 was what lay beneath the bonnet, but it is now. Most Fiestas these days get the one litre EcoBoost three-cylinder petrol engine, which almost everyone wants in this car, in electrified mild hybrid form. In this guise, it delivers more power with superior economy, and it also delivers on Ford's promise to offer an electrified version of every passenger car it brings to market in Europe. In addition, uh, the brand has also introduced an optional degree of autonomous driving technology uh, to Fiestas as part of this update too. Plus, there's a new seven-speed automatic gearbox option and the potential for extra safety kit. So this is, in short, on paper at least, a thoroughly well thought out piece of super mini development. But will it be enough to keep Ford at the top of the sales charts? Let's find out. So to the big questions here, what's the electrified engineering now added to this seventh generation Fiesta really like? And has it in any way diluted this car's greatest calling card, its energetic drive dynamics? Well, it certainly shouldn't have. Ford's choice of mild hybrid tech rather than the more efficient full hybrid technology that rivals like Renault and Honda and Toyota offer in this segment uh, means that the weight penalty for this technology is as relatively slight as the frugality benefits that it delivers, which will be good news if you're the kind of person who likes their driving. Variations on the Fiesta theme may come and go, but before driving any version of Ford's definitive Super Mini, there's one thing you almost always tend to know for certain, uh, that it'll be a great steer. 
from the launch of this seventh generation model uh, back in 2017. The blue oval brand sought to retain that traditional Fiesta attribute, yet at the same time to introduce a standard of ride quality that was closer to that that was delivered by their arch rivals like Volkswagen's Polo. Dynamically, the best of both worlds, in other words. Now to us, that sounded ambitious back then, and it still does now. The magazine and website reviews you'll see on this car suggest that all derivatives deliver great dynamic responses. But the truth is that the feel that you'll get from this Fiesta depends quite a lot on the variant that you choose. Uh, that's because two quite different chassis configurations have been used across the range. Now, most journalists seem to have tried the firmer package that's used in the various sporty ST models, like the one we're trying here, for example. But the volume versions and the plush Vignale Model 2 all get the softer setup that the majority of customers will end up with. In that guise, the car remains a great steer, but it isn't quite the uh, sharp, eager thing we remember earlier generation Fiesta models being. The difference isn't huge though, and the trade-off for the slight dynamic dilution is worthwhile because, true to Ford's objective, you will find that the ride quality of this Mark 7 model is hugely improved if you're coming to it direct from its pre-2017 Mark 6 predecessor, which is to be expected given that the whole suspension setup was completely revamped for this seventh generation design with bigger axle mounts which better iron out road imperfections. If you are a Fiesta fan, you'll notice the improvements that the current version of this car can offer over earlier generation models in this regard, especially over broken urban tarmac surfaces. The whole car these days has a more mature and more grown-up feel that we think the majority of owners will like, although the payoff for that lies with a slight extra degree of body roll through tighter bends. All of this is relative though, I mean by the standards of the Super Mini segment, this Fiesta, even in this dialed down form, is still offering a level of handling joie de vivre that's beyond anything that its competitors can manage. That Ford has managed to retain this advantage while making such great strides forward with ride quality says a great deal for the efforts of the engineering team behind this seventh generation model. Mind you, they did have some good raw materials to work with. Uh, this seventh generation model's body is 15% stiffer than that of its pre-2017 era predecessor, yet it remains one of the lightest in the class, and that always helps. Stability has been aided by a widening of the front and rear tracks, and there's the best torque vectoring system in the segment, this being one of those setups which works when you're uh, powering on through those tight bends to apply an imperceptibly small amount of braking to the inside front wheels, assisting tractional stability and firing you on from bend to bend. As a result, you can really throw this car into corners at speeds that most rivals really wouldn't be able to countenance. And you can do that with confidence-inspiring feedback through the wheel. The electric steering rack that was introduced into the Fiesta model line back in 2012 was upgraded for this Mark 7 model so that it's lighter when you need it to be when you're nipping around town, but it's weightier and more fearsome when you're pushing on. And that is one of the reasons why we think you'll feel so at one with this car in wet or slippery conditions. Of course, the sportier, firmly suspended and more enthusiast orientated ST line and ST models are even better in this regard. Uh, they deliver greater grip, a reduction in body roll and most of the uh, endearing eagerness that we were lamenting the slight absence of earlier. Anyway, enough with that. You'll be wanting to know about the electrified engine technology that we mentioned earlier, and it features on this model's core three-cylinder, one-litre EcoBoost petrol power plant, and it was what led us to revisit this seventh-generation model so relatively soon after its original launch. Now, we should point out here that you don't have to have it. At the time of this test in spring 2021, lower order models could still be had with the older and non-electrified 100 PS version of this one litre EcoBoost unit, or in base trim form with the brand's really ancient 1.1 litre TIVCT 75 PS engine. Uh, that's another petrol powertrain. All diesels have now been dropped from the Fiesta lineup. Plus, as you might know, the top Fiesta ST hot hatch that campaigns with a larger capacity 1.5 litre EcoBoost power plant. But it's the mild hybrid MHEV version of the 1 litre EcoBoost engine, uh, that's what we're trying here, that the vast majority of Fiesta customers will want going forward. 
Hybrid engines aren't new in this class. Toyota's been offering one in its rival Yaris for most of the last decade. But in their full-fat form, hybrids add what for many buyers is an unacceptably large premium to small cars of this kind. It's pretty difficult, after all, to buy a Yaris, even quite modestly specified Yaris's, for much less than £20,000. Um, what if a more affordable approach into hybrid tech could be delivered, which would be lighter and cheaper and more driver orientated? Well, Ford says that its MHEV mild hybrid tech does exactly that. Now, true, it's nothing like as efficient as a full hybrid model or a full electric, uh, and you'll find both those alternative technologies also well represented right across this segment, so do make sure you know what you're buying. But in compensation, uh, MHEV Tech boosts driver feel because it's lighter and also because it adds a slice of extra pulling power just when you need it. Now at this point we're compelled to revert to what the shampoo adverts call the science bit, so do feel free to glaze over for a minute or two um, if all you really care about is how much this car costs or how well it drives. Simplicity is the keynote here, so the one litre three cylinder EcoBoost power plant that this car primarily features is essentially the same one that Ford's been offering since 2011. Uh, it's more recently enhanced with cylinder deactivation technology which cuts down on cylinder use at low to medium throttle speeds. For the Fiesta MHEV though, this unit gets a lower compression ratio and a larger turbo too. And it's been embellished by a beefed up starter generator that's driven by a belt at the front of the engine which stores the energy harvested when you brake or decelerate in a tiny 48 volt lithium ion battery that's secreted at the back of the car. Now this provides a bit of extra zip when you accelerate, uh, Ford says up to 50 newton meters of extra torque and it delivers a little electric boost from low revs to torque fill while you're waiting for the turbo to spool up. So that little momentary hesitation you sometimes get with small turbo engines when you're pulling off from roundabouts and away from junctions is dealt with too. All good then, if it works. Broadly speaking, it does. Few potential Fiesta MHEV customers will have the ordinary version of this engine to benchmark against on their test drive, but those who are already familiar with it would perhaps notice that in this form, this unit pulls away more easily from almost any speed with fewer gear changes needed, and that makes it feel like a much larger capacity power plant. Your only real clue to the hybrid system's operation is an added set of icons on the instrument cluster here which show when the motor is recuperating energy under braking or providing it under acceleration. Otherwise the Fiesta drive experience is pretty familiar with a pleasingly fizzy, thrummy soundtrack under full throttle. You certainly wouldn't think that the little EcoBoost lump under the bonnet ahead of you had just three cylinders and a literage capacity not much different to that of a good bottle of Burgundy especially in its most potent form, which develops 155 PS and spirits you to 62 in 8.9 seconds and maxes out at 136 miles an hour. That's the engine which features in this test car. Most customers, though, will be happy with the lesser 125 PS version of this power plant, uh, the performance of which, to be frank, feels little different. The official figures are 9.4 seconds and 124 miles an hour. For the sake of completion, we'll give you the performance figures for the three other engines that you can also theoretically have in this car, uh, the rarely chosen ones we mentioned earlier. You might need a calendar instead of a stopwatch to measure the acceleration time of the rather inefficient base 1.1 litre TIVCT 75 PS unit. It actually takes 14.7 seconds on the way to 103 miles an hour. Plus, with that base engine, Ford won't give you the rear disc brakes that you get with the EcoBoost models. You don't even get six speeds for the manual gearbox either. For the non-electrified 1.0-litre EcoBoost 100 PS power plant, the figures are 10.8 seconds and 112 miles an hour. That only leaves the 200 PS 1.5-litre three-cylinder EcoBoost engine of the Fiesta SD hot hatch, uh, which also lacks mild hybrid tech, an engine that improves those stats to 6.5 seconds and 143 miles an hour. It would be very nice to have, but it would probably take most potential Fiesta folk way over budget. Bottom line then is that the powertrain sweet spot in the range is probably the 125 PS MHEV 1 litre unit, an engine that has the added advantage of being the only one in the range that can be ordered with the option of automatic transmission. 
In the past, we'd have counseled you to steer well clear of an automatic Fiesta, but with the arrival of the dual clutch seven speed auto, which was introduced with the updated version of this seventh generation model, we've needed to update that advice. That's mainly because uh, unlike previous Ford autos, this more sophisticated transmission really has relatively little impact on performance or on efficiency either. Choosing it carries the advantage of being able to specify Ford's latest stop-and-go adaptive cruise control system, which can bring the car to a halt in heavy traffic and then seamlessly start it off again without any driver input. Whatever gearbox you choose with this 1.0-litre EcoBoost MHEV engine, you'll find that it has a buzzy thrum under hard acceleration, and that's mainly because it lacks the balancer shaft that many competing three-cylinder units, uh, the PureTech power plant, for example, that you'll find a rival Vauxhall Corsa or a Peugeot 208. Mind you, uh, the sound of this Ford EcoBoost powertrain really isn't unpleasant, and it could even be said to enhance the character of the car. It's a soundtrack that's particularly evident if you choose the most energetic of the three selectable drive modes available to all Fiesta EcoBoost drivers, this being Sport. As with the other two drive settings, Normal and Eco, uh, this alters throttle response, steering feel, and on the auto models, gear shift timings too, to suit the way that you want to drive. If you've chosen the crossover style Fiesta Active model, then you'll get additional trail and slippery drive modes as well. Ultimately, whatever Fiesta EcoBoost model you choose, it's hard to go too far wrong. The characteristics of this engine perfectly suit the way that this car is as comfortable jinking through the city streets as it is entertaining you uh, on the back doubles on the way home, which reminds you that this Ford is a bestseller for a good reason. And with mild hybrid tech now installed in this car, that reason has just got a bit more compelling. Visually, there are a few changes to this car as part of the 2020 model year electrified update, which in some ways is a bit disappointing because this Fiesta should look different. It shares virtually nothing with the sixth generation model that sees production in 2017. Instead, at first glance, you might mistake it for just about any Fiesta made in the last decade. The company's European design director, Joel Pieskowski, says that he wanted to evolve the styling in a way that would make it uh, more contemporary without losing the essential fiestiness that customers love. Well, that's what's been delivered here. Get up close and personal here at the front and you begin to appreciate the thought that's gone into this approach. Uh, the smooth bonnet has a clean sculpted look and it nicely complements this smart wide grille which varies in style depending on the trim level that you've chosen and which emphasises the 13 millimetres of extra width that's built into this seventh generation model. Uh, Ford has embellished the basic spec of this car a fair bit since this Mark 7 model's original launch. Uh, even the cheapest trim levels now get these uh, slim headlamps with LED illumination for the low beams and the daytime running lights. Uh, these full LED headlamps are optional. Most models get front fog lights which turn with the bends and which sit in aerodynamic housings which vary in style depending on trim. Move to the side and you get a better perspective for the way the designers of this seventh generation Fiesta have teased out the dimensions a bit. It's actually 70 millimeters longer than the pre-2017 version of this car and it sits 20 millimeters lower. Ford's tried to make the profile more settled and less aggressively wedge shaped uh, while better defining both the central belt line which runs along uh, the bottom of the windows here into the headlamp and this additional crease which flows through the door handles. As part of this 2020 model update, all Fiestas now get alloy wheels of at least 16 inches in size. Uh, 17 inches are also available, and we have the even larger 18-inch five-spoke rock metallic finished rims here on this plush ST-Line Edition X variant. Plus, you can now have the roof in a contrast-coloured shade of agate black if you want. It's at the rear where you'll probably most readily notice the styling evolution of this Mark 7 model over its pre-2017 era predecessor. The most obvious change being the switch from the previous model's vertical tail lights to these horizontally shaped clusters, which feature a more distinctive C-shaped 
signature light pattern embellished with an LED nighttime signature with plusher variants like this one. And the idea of these horizontal clusters is to emphasize this Mark 7 model's wider stance and broader shoulders, hence also the way that this sculpted bumper has been scalloped uh, to include these reflective lenses at its far corners. A neat integrated roof-mounted tailgate spoiler completes the effect and if you're a real stickler for detail, up here you might notice the narrow panel shut lines, particularly here between the roof and the tailgate. And that's an example of what Ford says is an obsession with quality with this car. As usual though, what's more important is the stuff you can't see. The company based the design of this Mark 7 model on a thoroughly reworked version of the Global B platform used in the sixth generation Fiesta, but upgraded it with more laser welding, stiffer attachment points, and a body structure featuring 35% more ultra high strength boron steel, all of which delivered a 15% improvement in torsional stiffness. All of this is welcome, but as we've been saying, much of the improvement is invisible. So time to take you to a part of the car where the changes made over the last few years really are very evident. Here at the wheel, you really will find the cabin of this Fiesta very different if you haven't tried one for a few years. Uh, what might be familiar though is the choice of trimming materials, which remind you of this car's position at the budget end of Ford's model lineup. Uh, this Mark 7 design's original launch back in 2017, this was just about acceptable, but more recent Super Mini segment arrivals have since moved the game on quite a lot. Now, perhaps aware of this, the Blue Oval brand has now standardized some luxury features like the quick clear front windscreen here and velour floor mats too, that's uh, across the range. And they've tried to add a more premium feel to a pricier variants, the red stitch trimming of this plush ST Line Edition X variant, for example. Ford has also got rid of the previous poverty spec smaller sizes, for the Sync 3 Center Dash touchscreen. Uh, this 8 inch monitor is now standard, and that's whichever trim level you select. This entertainment display will probably be the first thing you'll notice in the cabin. It sprouts in freestanding form from the top of the center console here, and it includes a proper rotary volume and zoom controls that some rival systems have rather unwisely dispensed with. Uh, Ford has improved this sync setup as part of this 2020 model year update. Uh, they've built in a new user interface which features larger buttons. Uh, avoid entry level trim and you'll also get both navigation and the brand's latest Ford Pass Connect embedded modem uh, that's built in which allows for in-car Wi-Fi and remote access to various features from your smartphone. If you're not familiar with the sync package, it doesn't take long to adjust to it with the central dash monitor divided into sectors that allows you to activate audio, phone and where fitted sat nav functions via touchscreen icons. Uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone integration is standard fit and heating and ventilation is covered off by separate switch gear further down the center stack here, which is just as well because the display icons on the monitor can still be a bit fiddly to use. That's despite the inclusion of smartphone style pinch and swipe functionality. Uh, instead of stabbing away at the screen graphics, it's rather better to try to master the voice activated functionality, which most models offer. Uh, that allows you to issue simple one shot commands. So simply by saying phrases like, I need a coffee or I need petrol, or I need to park. You can easily locate nearby cafes and petrol stations or car parks and find destinations like train stations, airports and hotels. Anything this display can't tell you will be covered off by the further 4.2 inch monitor that you'll find in the instrument binnacle of plusher variants like this one. It deals with the usual trip computer functions. Uh, you view that through this smart leather stitched three spoke steering wheel here. Uh, the TFT screen sits above uh, small fuel and temperature gauges and it's flanked by big clear speed and rev counter dials. If you're in a mild hybrid model like this one, uh, then this instrument cluster will feature a set of icons that show when the motor is recuperating energy under braking or providing it under acceleration. It's all very user friendly and very ergonomically spot on, which is one reason why it's so easy to feel so comfortable in this car. There's a usefully wide range of seat and wheel adjustment. Uh, the driver's chair itself is supportive, although you do have to stretch quite a way up the range to get this with lumbar adjustment. 
And you do sit a little higher up than in some rivals, which is a boon when you're trying to negotiate uh, those tight city streets, for example. Rear three-quarter vision isn't quite as good. The small rear side windows hamper your over-the-shoulder view, uh, so we would suggest that you opt for one of the packages which will throw in rear parking sensors. The more we've lived with this car, the more we've appreciated the little touches that Ford has thought so much about with this Mark 7 model. The optional B&O Play 10-speaker audio system we're trying here, that's an extra cost box that's well worth ticking if the trim level you've chosen doesn't already include it. But some less obvious embellishments have also contributed a great deal to our enjoyment of this seventh generation design. Uh, Ford has designed the doors so that they require 20% less effort to close and the wipers so that they clear 13% more of this clever quick clear windscreen, uh, which you will really appreciate on frosty mornings. There's also a lot more interior storage space than long-time Fiesta owners will remember. You get this big one-litre area at the bottom of the centre stack with a USB port nearby that'll be ideal for your mobile phone. Uh, this area can also house this wireless charging mat, which is either standard or optional, depending on the trim level you've chosen. There's a coin tray ahead of the handbrake and an integrated pair of cup holders next to it. Uh, there is an armrest between the seats, which lifts to reveal a removable tray, a pen clip and a further USB port. The door pockets are a bit small, but you do get an overhead sunglasses compartment and a further cubby by the driver's right knee. Illuminated vanity mirrors are built into both sun visors and you do get a reasonably sized glove box too. And it's big enough to incorporate an optional CD player if you still want to play some of your old plastic discs. Inevitably, there are a few issues, things we'd want Ford to look at for future model updates. There are no roofline grab handles of the type that help older folk to get in. Uh, the cruise control buttons on the steering wheel, they're a bit fiddly. Uh, plus, the centre dash touchscreen attracts reflections, and the ventilation vents just beneath it freeze your fingers if you linger too long on the controls. We mentioned build quality earlier on. Well, the glove box lid and the door handles let the side down particularly here. To be fair though, everything feels really decently screwed together though. So, time to take a seat in the rear. As you can see, we've got the five door body shape here that customers who will be regularly using the back seats will want. Uh, Ford's tried to look after these people better with this Mark 7 model, not only by increasing the length of the body shape here, but also by incorporating thoughtful design touches, like the way that the sleek silhouette better channels rainwater away from the roof edges, and that reduces the risk of passengers being dripped on when they get in and out. Get yourself into the back seat and as usual your impressions will be heavily influenced by whatever preconceptions you start out with. And if you come to this car fresh from ownership of a pre-2017 era Mark 6 model, it's likely that you'll view Ford's greater efforts in this part of the cabin in a positive light. Uh, there is after all 16mm more knee room than there was with that uh, previous generation design. Plus the seats, uh, they're softer and they offer greater side-to-side -side support. Should you be trying a Fiesta, however, having sampled a more spacious Super Mini rival, and there are plenty of those, then you'll probably be a little less inclined to be so generous. Uh, there's no really clever stuff in here, like the cinema-style flip-up seat bases you'll find in a rival Honda Jazz, or the reclining seat backrests you'll get in a rival Mini 5 door, but then we didn't really expect that. The issue is whether Ford has properly covered off all the basics here. So, is that the case? Well, really tall folk will need cooperation from those ahead to get truly comfortable in terms of leg space. And if you have lanky teenage children who are likely to be regularly sitting in the back, then don't order a model that's fitted with the optional panoramic glass roof because with that feature fitted, they're going to really struggle for head space. Uh, most buyers, of course, will uh, merely be carrying small children back here, although even a youngster will only want to travel rather short distances in the middle of this rear bench here because the cushion is quite narrow. Still, both outer seats uh, feature load limiters and pretensioners. Uh, those are both features that were omitted on older generation Fiestas. In addition, you get a rear centre headrest, uh, which doesn't always feature, actually, on a Super Mini. And to let in a bit of extra light, there are these odd high-set quarter-light windows uh, set in the C-pillars. 
Plus there are the expected Isofix charge seat fastenings and coat hooks too, but there are no grab handles or connectivity ports. Small door bins and mat pockets are provided for storage, and there's a small cubby here just on top of the central transmission tunnel. Finally, we'll take a look in the boot, but we'll pause on the way to mention the Ford Easy Fuel capless refueling system, which is designed to stop you from putting diesel into a petrol model or vice versa. Now, what's it like back here? Well, owners of the sixth generation model might notice that the tailgate's wider to give easier cargo area access, but they'll grouse about the fact that there is still quite a high sill to heave bigger shopping bags over. Uh, there's not much space underneath the cargo floor here, despite the absence of any kind of spare wheel. And that's an oversight that's now sadly common with the majority of models in the Super Mini segment. With an ST line edition level model like this one, and also with the ST hot hatch, you can't even specify a spare wheel as an option. An optional spare though is available with the other Fiesta trim levels, and it will also now be available to you, even if the variant that you're looking at has been fitted with the B&O sound system upgrade. Uh, now that wasn't possible before this 2020 update. That enhanced audio setup previously housed its subwoofer under the boot floor, but that's now been relocated to the wheel arch where it ought to have been put in the first place. Back in 2017, when we first tested this Mark 7 model, we hoped that the lengthier platform would bring this Ford closer to the prevailing Super Mini standard for luggage capacity. Uh, we were, however, somewhat disappointed to find that an improvement of only 17 litres had been made. Uh, that still is an issue for us. The luggage bay is rated at 292 litres for both body shapes, and that's a figure that most rivals can comfortably improve on. Still, it will be enough for a folded push chair and the contents of the weekly shop, and that's all that most owners will need. There are no tie-down points here, but there is a light on the right, and bag hooks feature on the side walls. If you are able to flatten the 60-40 split folding rear backrest, you'll find that the revealed cargo floor ends up with quite a step in it, but the total capacity figure looks rather better by segment standards, uh, 1,093 litres. As we've been finding out in this test, Ford has improved this Mark 7 Fiesta quite a lot since its original launch, but the brand also expects customers to pay for that. Now, at our original test back in 2017, prices started from around £13,000, and even the plushest version wouldn't set you back much more than around about 20000 At the time of this test, though, in spring 2021, things were a bit different uh, because Ford does not now offer a poverty spec level for this car. Prices kick off at nearly £17,000, and a plush variant like the top Vignali model has a list figure of well over £24,000. All the engines available are these days of three cylinders in size, and all of them are now of the petrol variety. TDCI diesel fuel Fiestas have been consigned to history. There are no longer base style or ZTEC trim levels, so the range now kicks off with base trend specification, and that offers what previously would have been a mid-level standard of equipment. Uh, that is the trim level that you have to have if you are one of those 30% uh, of Fiesta customers who want the alternative three-door body shape instead of this five-door one. That saves you only about £400 over this more popular shape. And it's also the only trim level that still offers Ford's three-cylinder 1.1-litre TIVCT unit. That's an older tech, normally aspirated engine, which is primarily there to keep the asking price down of the base model and isn't helped by its continuing use of a manual gearbox with only five speeds. At the time of this test, with most core trim levels, Ford was, for a limited period, still offering Fiesta customers the opportunity to save around £1,200 over the cost of the base mild hybrid powertrain and choose instead its one-litre turbo EcoBoost engine in its older 100 PS non-electrified form. If you can give those two poverty power plants a swerve and start your perusal of the range with the one litre three cylinder mild hybrid turbo unit, it's available in a volume 125 PS form, then prices start actually at around £19,000 with this five door model. Yes, you did hear that right. Uh, where have things got to in the industry when we're talking about the most sensible version of a Fiesta in its cheapest form, costing not too far off £20,000? 
Ideally though, of course, you won't want a base trend spec Fiesta. So let's guide you through the structure of the rest of the range so you can pick a variant that's right for you. With the more plusher mainstream models that we're just about to talk you through, uh, the brand does offer the mild hybrid engine, not only in 125 PS form, but for an extra £670 in the quicker 155 PS guys we've been trying here. Uh, stick with the 125 PS unit and there's a £1,500 option of the company's latest seven-speed dual-clutch automatic gearbox as an alternative to the usual six-speed manual. Got that? Good, we are going to be having a short quiz later. So with the mechanicals understood, what are your choices here? Well, if you simply want a value orientated, nicely equipped version of this Ford, uh, then stay with mid-range titanium trim. It's also available in plusher titanium X guys. And that spec will give you just about everything that you'll really need, except for a bit of luxury and or lifestyle presence. For that, you'll need one of the top trim choices and a budget starting point of around £21,000, at which point the lineup offers two main options. Now, most tend to want the sporty ST Line Edition trim, also available in the plusher ST Line X Edition form we've been trying here. But alternatively, if you like the thought of your Fiesta with a bit more of an SUV crossover vibe, then Ford offers the intriguing Active Edition version, which has a slightly higher ride height, some extra body cladding and some additional slippery surface drive modes too. Again, there is also a plusher variation of that, the Active X Edition. Spend more still, think getting on for £24,000 and there's the leather-lined luxury orientated Vignale Edition. Of course, the Fiesta range wouldn't be complete without a proper hot hatch version, and Ford still offers that in the form of one of our favourite fast super minis, the Fiesta ST. Now, this model gets its own engine, a three-cylinder unit again, but this one is a non-electrified 1.5-litre EcoBoost power plant that puts out a meaty 200 PS. Uh, the ST comes only in manual gearbox form, and prices start from around £22,000, but you do get both three- and five-door body style options and three trim levels, uh, ST2, ST3 and top ST edition, by which point you're spending over £27,000 on a Fiesta. Yep. On to the value proposition offered by mainstream Fiesta models. Now, most rival super minis in this segment kick off like this Ford does with older baseline engines priced in the 16 to 17,000 pound bracket. There is a premium to pay, of course, for a perkier power plant with turbo technology, but it's not usually as much as the 19,000 pound starting figure that Ford wants here for a five door Fiesta with the 125 PS MHEV mild hybrid unit. This is the kind of money, though, that the Korean brands like Kia and Hyundai, with their Rio and i20 models respectively, are asking for mild hybrid tech in this segment. Although the Mazda 2 proves that you can deliver that kind of technology for less in this class of car. What about more obvious super mini rivals to this Fiesta? Well, you would save around £1,000 if you chose a base petrol turbo version of the Volkswagen Polo or Vauxhall Corsa over the cheapest electrified version of this Ford, and a bit more still by choosing a TCE 90 version of the Renault Clio. But none of those cars have yet embraced mild hybrid tech, so they'll all cost you a bit more to run, and they'll feel a bit slow off the mark too. Uh, base turbo petrol versions of class favourites like the Peugeot 208 and the Seat Ibiza cost around about the same as this Fiesta and that's despite their lack of electrified tech. And if you really don't care very much about what lies uh, beneath the bonnet then you might well be tempted by the fact that uh, the Fiesta MHEV money would also buy you a much sportier 1.5 litre mini hatch five door Cooper model but one of those would cost you a lot more to run. Obviously, cheaper contenders in the sector get cheaper engine technology. We're thinking here about cars like the Citroen C3, uh, the Nissan Micra, the Skoda Fabia, and cheaper versions of the Kia Rio. Still, the substantial amount that you'll save with small hatches like those might well offset that for you, uh, provided that you don't mind somewhat slothful performance, shall we say. Uh, you can reduce the asking price still further by going for a really bargain basement brand model like the Dacia Sandero or the MG3, but there you really get what you don't pay for. 
Obviously, with more sophisticated technology than this Fiesta can offer in the Super Mini segment, uh, you're going to pay more. And we're thinking here of the full hybrid engines, which are now offered in this class by three models, the Renault Clio E-Tech, the Honda Jazz, and the Toyota Yaris. Now, unlike a mild hybrid power plant, a full hybrid engine can run independently on electric power alone for short periods, and that means that fuel and CO2 returns are significantly better. It really comes down to uh, whether you're prepared to pay another £1,000 or more for that kind of capability, and that means a realistic starting price for a full hybrid super mini of this kind, uh, which would be approaching £20,000. For many potential Fiesta customers, that might be a step too far. Now, what we haven't mentioned in all of this comparative comment, though, is the fact that this Ford outshines every rival that we've just mentioned when it comes to drive dynamics. Put simply, it's just more fun to drive, and that's something that you'll enjoy even if you're not much of a driving enthusiast. Now, if that and your local Ford dealership's likely willingness to sharpen up the asking prices a bit is enough to sway you towards this Ford, uh, then you'll want to know about the standard spec of this car. So let's take a look at that now. We mentioned earlier that the blue oval brand no longer offers poverty spec levels with this car, so you'll be expecting a reasonable tally of kit from the base trend trim level. And by and large, uh, you shouldn't be disappointed with what's offered. Uh, all Mark 7 model Fiestas have always offered uh, features like air conditioning, uh, auto headlamps, a speed limiter and a trip computer. So, of course, trend models get all of that, uh, along with features that previously would have been, well, restricted to variants that were further up the range. So things like 16-inch alloy wheels, uh, headlamps with LED low beams, a quick clear heated windscreen, and perhaps most significantly, the largest 8-inch version of Ford's Sync 3 Central Dash infotainment touchscreen. And that comes complete with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone integration. Also, a six-speaker DAB audio setup, Bluetooth, and an emergency assistance feature, which alerts the rescue services uh, with your exact GPS location if the airbags go off. Other trend spec inclusions now run to selectable drive modes, normal, eco, and sport, the lower floor mats, uh, a height adjustable driver's seat, LED daytime running lights, powered heated mirrors, a Thatcham alarm, and a very decent level of camera safety kit, uh, which we're going to get onto in just a few minutes. Plus, there's the Ford My Key system, which lets you set certain functions that can be restricted with the spare individual key fob provided. So, for example, the volume of the stereo or the maximum speed of the car can be limited for younger drivers. Now, if you're a parent, that feature alone might really sell you this car. Many Fiesta customers, though, will want to start their perusal of the range with a mid-range titanium spec model. These variants present a bit more sharply, both outside and in, thanks to the addition of extra exterior chrome work, uh, rear privacy glass, front fog lamps, and Sensico man-made leather trim for the steering wheel and the gear knob. Uh, other titanium spec features include rain-sensing wipers, an auto-dimming rear-view mirror, cruise control with an active speed limiter, a centre console with an opening armrest, uh, rear parking sensors and a keyless start button. Titanium trim also adds navigation into the Sync 3 infotainment setup, plus the clever Ford Pass Connect embedded modem. Now that allows in-car Wi-Fi and the chance to interact remotely with your Fiesta from your smartphone uh, via the Ford Pass mobile app. Using this, you'll be able to remotely lock or unlock the car, uh, locate the vehicle if you've forgotten where you parked it, and remotely check the fuel level, the alarm status, and more. With an automatic model, you can even remotely start the car, maybe warming up the cabin while you finish your breakfast, which would be lovely. If you want a bit more in a titanium-trimmed Fiesta, then you can upgrade to Titanium X-Spec, which further adds larger 17-inch wheels, power-folding mirrors with puddle lights, keyless entry, and tail lamps with special LED night signatures. And inside, electronic automatic temperature control, upholstery that's part trimmed in Sensico leather, uh, lumbar adjustment for the front seats, passenger seat height adjustment too, uh, LED ambient lighting and some extra camera safety features that we'll brief you on very shortly. 
Perhaps most significantly, Titanium X variants get Ford's desirable B&O Premium Audio 360-degree sound system, which includes a digital sound processor, a mid-range centre speaker in the instrument panel, a subwoofer in the boot wall, centre dash and A-pillar-mounted tweeters, and mid-ranger woofers in the front doors and the rear quarters. If you want to go further in the mainstream Fiesta lineup, as we said earlier, you have the choice of getting a package of either sporty touches with one of the ST line edition models, a car like this one, or crossover cues uh, with the active edition variants. In both cases, you get all the main features of a standard titanium spec model as a starting point. ST line edition trim further gives you 17 inch alloy wheels with a rock metallic finish, sports tuned suspension, and a full body styling kit with unique front fog lamps, a specially designed upper front grille, and a large rear spoiler. You also get special front fog lamps and an LED tail light signature, while to set the inside of the cabin apart, uh, there's a black headliner. If you want a bit more, then there's the ST Line Edition X trim option we've been trying here, which in addition to larger rock metallic coloured 18 inch alloy wheels, adds most of those extra X Pack features we mentioned at titanium level the BNO premium audio system upgrade, uh, the power folding mirrors, uh, the part leather upholstery, the keyless entry, the LED ambient lighting, uh, and so on. Overall, if you're looking for a mildly sporty Super Mini, then the ST-Line Edition variants offer a well-judged package. But what if you're one of the increasing number of buyers who are forsaking the Super Mini segment in favour of small Nissan Duke or Renault Capture-style SUVs? Well, if previously you've traditionally favoured a Fiesta, don't go looking at one of those crossover class cars just yet because Ford wants you to consider one of the Fiesta Active Edition models. Now with these, you essentially get a Fiesta with a raised ride height, uh, roof rails, special wheels, a skid plate style body kit, extra selectable slippery drive modes, and a range of extra so-called lifestyle touches. That's all with the standard Active Edition trim package, plus a Active Edition X spec uh, sets itself apart with Shadowline black finished 18 inch wheels and silver coloured roof rails, plus all the extra X pack embellishments that we briefed you on with titanium and ST line edition trim. That only leaves the very top of the Fiesta lineup, and that's characterized by high luxury and high performance. The high luxury comes in the form of the Uber Plush Vignale model, which will be perfect for downsizers from larger luxury cars. It gets its own unique front grille and 10 spoke 17 inch alloy wheels, while the cabin is distinguished by upholstery and stitched quilted Sensico man made leather, as well as by Vignale branded mats and door threshold plates. Other plush touches include the X-Pack niceties we've been talking about, along with heated front seats, front parking sensors, and door edge protectors. Plus, there's a bit of extra technology too, in the form of a rear view camera and an active park assist system, which automatically steers you into spaces. As for high performance, well, of course, for that, you'll have to turn to the Fiesta ST. Now, other rival Super Mini hot hatches tend only to come non-negotiably with expensive equipment packages. But Ford has kept the entry price of its hot hatch down by offering a base ST2 level of trim with just the key shopping rocket features. In this case, that means 17-inch ST alloy wheels, Recaro sport seats, and an ST soft fuel gear knob, which join core ST engineering elements like special suspension, a dual chrome exhaust, and a selectable drive mode setup with normal sport and track options. ST Fiestas are set apart outside by unique treatment for the front grille, the scuff plates and the rear bumper which gets the lower diffuser and inside by blue detailing for the upholstery, the steering wheel, the handbrake lever, the seat belts and the floor mats. You have to pay extra at this level though for the must-have performance pack and that gives you launch control, uh, performance shift indicators and a Quafer limited slip differential for extra cornering traction. Most Fiesta ST customers though want the plusher ST3 trim, which includes that performance pack as standard, along with bigger 18 inch ST wheels featuring red brake calipers, plus leather upholstery, a rear view camera, great interior highlights, heat for the front seats and the steering wheel, uh, keyless entry, electronic automatic climate control, and that B&O audio system upgrade. At the time of this test, Ford was also offering a top ST edition variant, which adds to the ST3 kit tally with a special Ford performance design for the 18-inch wheels, 
full LED headlamps, a black rear spoiler, ST puddle lights, unique Azura blue paintwork, sports pedals and, rather temptingly, a direct sport mode steering wheel button. Enough on the standard spec across the range. Let's assume that you've chosen the Fiesta variant that you want and you're ready to start considering the possibility of adding on a few options. Now, key things include the chance to add in a contrast-coloured agate black roof. Uh, that's provided, of course, that agate black isn't your chosen paint colour. Uh, whatever your preferred paint colour is, though, you'll probably end up paying more for it because the only standard shade is solid race red. Uh, there are various premium colours and then there's a range of nicer exclusive shades like this car's Freedom Blue. Uh, the plush Vignale variant, by the way, uh, which can also be ordered with the option of larger 18-inch wheels, has its own unique colour palette. Otherwise, providing you ignore base trim, you can add a panoramic glass roof and the full LED headlamps that we have here. Uh, there's also a comfort pack, and that'll give you heat for the front seats and the steering wheel. Uh, bear in mind that you can no longer specify the B&O premium audio system as an option. So if you want that, as we think you will, uh, you'll need to choose one of the trim levels that has it fitted. Uh, we briefed you on those earlier on. On the base trend models, you might want to add in a wireless charging mat, navigation and the city pack, which gives you rear parking sensors and power folding mirrors. For the ST line edition variants, there's an ST design pack that gives you ST scuff plates and on the manual models, an aluminium finish for the gear stick and for the pedals. Uh, across the range, you can also add a sportier look and feel by adding in features like a carbon fibre gear shift knob and also the Ford Performance branded front floor mats. And a sportier drive too if you add in the firmer coilover suspension kit and that also comes in IBAC engineered form. That only leaves practical touches. Now, first and foremost, we'd want a spare wheel. Unfortunately, you don't get one as standard, and even worse, you can't get one at all with the ST models or the two ST line edition variants. What about other optional practicalities, though, across the range? Well, you can add in a tow bar, a roof base carrier, and roof crossbars, of course. For the boot, there's a foldable transport box, a boot liner, a load retention guard and rear bumper protectors. Plus, if you have animals, you'll want the pads for all pet travel mat. You might also want rubber floor mats, mud flaps, a climber wind deflectors, an umbrella holder, a coat hanger, a dash cam, front parking sensors, a premium safety pack, which will give you a warning triangle and a safety vest, or for the glove box, a CD player. Enough with general options, let's now consider this Fiesta's safety credentials. Now, at the launch of this seventh generation model in 2017, Ford got a five-star Euro NCAP rating, but this car wouldn't get that today because, rather disappointingly, the bulk of the range doesn't include standard autonomous braking. Uh, the brand's AEB, Autonomous Emergency Braking Setup, uh, which you still have to pay extra for with the more affordable variants. Um, what you do now get, though, across the lineup is Ford's NCAP Pack, which gives you lane keeping alert. Uh, that will warn you if you drift out of your lane. And the lane keeping aid, too, and that applies some subtle steering assistance to ease you back to where you ought to be. Also now standard is the uh, emergency assistance feature that I mentioned earlier. Uh, now this will alert the emergency services with your exact GPS location if the airbags go off. It is worth pointing out that this seventh generation Fiesta is an intrinsically safe design too. At its original launch, Ford redesigned the B-pillar and the doors to provide better side impact protection and fitted every variant with six airbags, uh, twin front side and curtain bags. Uh, the side bags have been designed to lift the occupant's arm away from the impact zone. Now, some rivals include a driver's knee bag too, but Ford says uh, that the Fiesta doesn't need one, and that's thanks to a clever locking seatbelt tongue attachment on the driver's belt, which uh, prevents slippage of the belt during an accident. The rear outer seats feature load limiters and pre-tensioners, and that wasn't the case with the pre-2017 era Fiestas. And another safety improvement when this Mark 7 model was first launched lay in the fact that uh, inside the doors are pressure sensors which enable restraint systems to be activated several milliseconds earlier in the event of a side impact. 
Pedestrian protection is helped by the fact that the headlamps are designed to travel rearwards on impact. Uh, plus, there is also a collapsible cowl and wiper spindle assembly that's designed to give way in the event of head impacts. This was the first small car to be fitted with ABS braking. That was back in 1989. And today you also get ESP stability control, tyre pressure monitoring and hill start assist, which stops you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Uh, the big news with this seventh generation design, though, has always been its potential for far superior camera safety technology. And that makes it rather frustrating that so little of that is provided as standard on the variants that most Fiesta customers will actually choose. Uh, now, this technology package can potentially incorporate up to two cameras, three radars and 12 ultrasonic sensors, which together are able to monitor 360 degrees around the vehicle and scan the road ahead up to a distance of 130 metres. And that's more than the length of a football pitch. To be fair, some extra camera safety features are added as you ascend the range. Uh, ignore base trend spec and the standard non-X versions of titanium ST-Line Edition and Active Edition trim. And your plusher Fiesta will come with traffic sign recognition, auto high beam and a driver alert feature which warns you if the cabin sensor detects driver drowsiness. Uh, those are all helpful things to have, so it's worth knowing that if you've avoided base trend trim, you can add those three features back in with an optional mid-series driver assistance pack. Now this costs another £900 and it's well worth having because it also includes that missing AEB, Autonomous Emergency Braking Setup. Uh, now that has a particular focus on pedestrians and it also works at night. The pack additionally has a blind spot information system. Uh, now that stops you from dangerously pulling out to overtake in front of another vehicle and also cross traffic alert. Now that will warn you of oncoming traffic when you're reversing out of a parking space. And that system is now enhanced for the 2020 model year with active braking so that the brakes, if necessary, will actually be automatically applied to prevent a collision. Uh, this mid-series driver assistance pack will also give you door edge protectors, a rear view camera, uh, front parking sensors and an advanced auto park system which will steer you into spaces, uh, now even perpendicular ones. Uh, a further pack feature is intelligent adaptive cruise control. Now that will automatically regulate your speed to the uh, surrounding traffic as well as speed signs on highway gantries and on the automatic models in another update for 2020 onwards. It will now slow and stop the car if you come across a tailback and then seamlessly start it off again. That's a great feature to have in city traffic. If you have a higher spec Fiesta model, which may have some of those safety and convenience features already fitted, uh, the Vignali variant, for example, has a standard blind spot information system and also autonomous emergency braking, uh, then your dealer will recommend that uh, the alternative optional high series driver assistance pack is added in. Uh, this adds any items from the mid series driver assistance pack, which your particular Fiesta doesn't already have for a further 600 pounds. As with its Puma small crossover, Ford liberally uses the word hybrid with a capital H to describe this car, which we can't help feeling is a bit misleading. This isn't, after all, a hybrid in the usual sense, uh, which a potential buyer would understand. An electrified Fiesta can't drive on electric power alone, nor can it be plugged in. Uh, it does instead get one of the new generation of so-called mild hybrid power plants. Ford calls them MHEV units, uh, basically ordinary engines which are lightly tinseled with a tiny lithium-ion battery, which just about justifies the electrified marketing spiel. The way that mild hybrid tech works is pretty universal, but we'll recap it here in case you haven't viewed our driving experience section. Uh, the one-litre, three-cylinder EcoBoost turbo petrol engine, already pretty efficient, 
thanks to its use of cylinder deactivation technology at medium to low throttle speeds is embellished here with a belt driven integrated starter generator that's the BISG this one is of 11.5 kilowatts in output this replaces the standard alternator and it enables the recovery and storage of energy that's usually lost during braking and coasting to charge a tiny 48 volt lithium ion battery which is air cooled and secreted beneath the rear seat. The BISG also acts as a motor integrating with the engine and using the stored energy that it harvests to provide some extra pulling power during normal driving and acceleration as well as running the vehicle's electrical ancillaries. The belt driven integrated starter generator is also able to aid the power plant stop start system uh, in urban traffic and that restarts the engine in approximately 300 milliseconds, about the same as the blink of an eye. And the BISG also enables the Fiesta EcoBoost Hybrid's auto stop start technology to operate in a wider range of scenarios for even greater fuel savings, including when coasting to a stop below 10 miles an hour, and even when the vehicle's in gear with the clutch pedal depressed. Thanks to all of this, the subsequent reduction in the amount of work required from the petrol engine results, says Ford, in a fuel efficiency improvement of up to 9%. So what does that actually equate to in terms of WLTP related stats? Well, let's start with the Fiesta variant that most would choose, the 125 PS MHEV 1 litre EcoBoost Hybrid manual gearbox variant. This returns up to 57.6 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 112 grams per kilometre of CO2. The 7-speed auto gearbox you can specify with that engine has relatively little effect on those figures. Think up to 53.3 mpg and up to 119 grams per kilometre. You'll need some class perspective there. Uh, most directly comparable conventionally engined super mini models, uh, well they deliver about 5 miles per gallon less and they put out about 7 to 8 grams per kilometre of CO2 more. You can actually see the difference that the MHEV Tech makes because the blue oval brand does still offer a conventional non-electrified version of this three-cylinder EcoBoost 1-litre power plant, uh, the old 100 PS version of this unit. This manages up to 53.3 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 120 grams per kilometre. So it's as it says on the tin, the difference that MHEV Tech makes is indeed mild, but that shouldn't detract from the uh, very strong running cost showing, assuming your comparison point lies with rivals in this class using conventional engines. And that showing isn't diluted very much if you go for the higher output 155 PS version of the MHEV unit that we've been using here. This manual only model records up to 56.5 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 113 grams per kilometre of CO2. For completion, we'll mention the minority interest power plants that top and tail the range. The older Tech 75 PS 1.1 litre TIVCT unit that's fitted to the base trend models manages 53.3 mpg and up to 121 grams per kilometre. And the top 200 PS 1.5 litre EcoBoost SD hot hatch manages returns of up to 44.1 mpg and up to 145 grams per kilometre of CO2. All the figures that we've quoted across the range assume that you're running the car in the most frugal of its various selectable drive modes, that's the Eco one. It might be instructive at this juncture to compare this Ford's efficiency showing to what you'd get from a full hybrid model in this class, uh, the kind of car that most likely springs to mind being Toyota's little Yaris. One of those in 1.5 litre hybrid form manages a WLTP rated combined cycle fuel showing of up to 68.9 mpg and a CO2 reading of up to 92 grams per kilometre. That's the kind of comparison that the blue oval brand might like us to make here against a full hybrid model which isn't that much more efficient and which in comparably equipped form would cost well over £2,000 more to buy. Unfortunately for Ford though, there are other full hybrid models in the class that manage to deliver next level efficiency with less of a price premium. The Renault Clio E-Tech hybrid we recently tested for example manages up to 64.2 miles per gallon on the WLTP combined cycle uh, and up to 98 grams per kilometre of CO2 and at the time this test in spring 2021 was priced in comparable form from around £20,000, so about £1,000 more than a base MHEV Fiesta. But it's nothing like as good to drive as this Ford. Ultimately, as usual, it all depends on your priorities. 
various design features help quite a lot in maximising this Mark 7 Fiesta's efficiency returns and their contribution is welcome given the fact that this 7th generation model is uh, 33 kilos heavier than its Mark 6 predecessor. The auto stop start system has been further developed for this era and as we've said that's particularly effective with the MHEV engines. The brand is keen to suggest that uh, the sleeker aerodynamics also play their part although the quoted CD drag coefficient figure is virtually the same as with the pre-2017 design. All EcoBoost variants benefit from the addition of an active grille shutter which sees slats in the front grille remaining closed at startup so the power plant can warm up more quickly to its optimum operating temperature. On the move, the flaps can open or shut for optimum aerodynamics. What else should we cover here in terms of what you'll need to know about the costs of running this Fiesta? Well, we'll tell you about servicing uh, on all engines. That's required every two years or 18,000 miles, uh, whichever comes around first. Two prepaid servicing plans are available, one that costs £340 and covers you for two years and two services, and another costs £550 and is transferable to future owners and covers three years and three services. Maintenance bookings can be done online through the My Ford portal. Now this is part of the Ford Blue Service Scheme, which wraps up all the care and maintenance of your car into one bundle. And that includes a free 30-point e-check of vital parts, and it highlights any work that's required with red, amber, and green traffic light warnings to rank items which need attention in order of importance. There's also the Ford service app that you can download to your phone for free. It lets you locate your nearest dealer and make a booking. Uh, plus, it has some extra elements. It allows you, for example, to find petrol stations. As for the warranty, well, like all Fords, this one comes with a 36-month, 60,000-mile package, which also includes one year of Europe-wide breakdown assistance. On top of that, there's an anti-corrosion guarantee for 12 years. Onto insurance, uh, that's an important consideration for the many younger buyers who'll want to be uh, able to choose this car. The one good thing you can say for the normally aspirated 1.1 litre TIBCT engine uh, that's fitted to the cheapest trend spec model is that it comes with super low insurance, that's Group 4E. The various EcoBoost engines uh, cost you quite a lot more to cover. The non-electrified 100 PS version is rated at Group 10E. The 125 PS MHEV hybrid attracts a rating between 13E and 15E, depending on variant. This MHEV 155 PS model is rated at Group 17E, and the top 1.5 litre EcoBoost SD hot hatch is rated at Group 28E. Finally, let's consider the question of residual values. This area has never been a Fiesta strength, but so far the Mark 7 model has performed much better than its pre-2017 era Mark 6 predecessor. Ford says it surveyed six major residual value providers and found that a typical Fiesta model, a 1-litre T EcoBoost MHEV 5-door titanium, would, according to those experts, retain an average of £1,272 more of its value after three years than a directly equivalent variant in the Mark VI range could manage. If you want percentage figures, let's tell you that after three years and 30,000 miles, independent sources reckon that you'll be looking at retained values of between 35 and 41 percent of the original purchase price, with the one litre T EcoBoost MHEV petrol models performing best. That's on a par with obvious rivals. The Ford Fiesta has always been a vehicle that the British public has warmed to, but the truth is that before this seventh generation model arrived, super mini buyers chose this car either because it was great to drive or because they'd been offered a deal that was too good to turn down. There really wasn't any other reason to buy one. Uh, this Mark 7 model is set out to change all that though. It's smarter to look at, it's smarter to sit in, and it's smarter to operate. But it wasn't really complete until Ford introduced the electrified engine technology we've been trying here. In so many respects, this is now the super mini that we'd hoped the company would build. Uh, efficient running costs, cutting edge media features and sophisticated cabin tech have all been added in without diluting the sheer joie de vivre which continues to set the drive dynamics of this car apart from its rivals. And it's all been done with a polish and a self-belief that we've never seen from a Fiesta before. 
Flawless then? No, of course not. Choose this test car's MHEV engine as you'll probably want to, and its hybrid badging will probably lead you to expect more in terms of gains and efficiency than this kind of token electrified engineering can actually deliver. Plus, for all the improvements made to this model line, it still lags behind most Super Mini rivals in terms of rear seat space, boot capacity, and cabin quality. We'd like to see autonomous braking standardized too. Still, if these things aren't essential to you in choosing your ideal Super Mini, as they may not be, then you'll find that there's much to like here. The design could easily have gone the way of Ford's EcoSport SUV and become something of a compromised global product. Instead, the Fiesta feels as perfectly suited to our market as ever. And this Ford continues to have a cheeky, endearing quality that many more clinical rivals lack. So in short, this is, more than ever, a small car that super mini buyers simply can't ignore.